get a chance. Have you ever just felt like asking people, what are you thinking? What are you? Because we don't know what people are thinking except by the actions that they do. What you do will demonstrate what you're thinking. You guys know that, right? So watch, I wanna, I wanna show you something real quick. Um, it's the book of Matthew. And Jesus makes his first public speech. You get, anybody know what that's called? The, no, nope, nobody. The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes of being like Christ. That's the first thing he starts off with. And what does he do? Does he curse everybody right from the top? Cursed are you? Nope, he blesses. He says, blessed are the, blessed are the, he hands out all these blessings to give people something to think about. And then, this is Matthew chapter 5. Give me verse 17. I want to show you something absolutely phenomenal. As Jesus hands out all these blessings and he's, he's working on getting these people's attitude straight, he says, think not. Why do you think he said that? Now, the Bible tells you all the time that he knew what men were thinking. We don't know what people are thinking. We just look at their actions and we can judge, oh, well, you were clearly thinking this. But he starts off by telling them, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Okay, first question, um, which law is he talking about right there? He's talking about the law of God. He's talking about the Torah. You have to imagine yourself being there, right? He's on a mountaintop and he's talking to the people and everybody is around him. And he says, don't even let the idea enter into your mind that I came to do away with the Torah. That's the word that he would have used the law and the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to postpone. No, I don't say that either. It says to fulfill. Um, this word fulfill means to fill to the full. So if I had a glass here, right? Like if I was sipping on whatever you're drinking right there and I poured just a little bit in there, is it filled to the full? That means there's still room for more to be done, right? Okay, but when I fill it all the way up, it is fully filled. It's now complete. Do I fill it up and then just throw it out? Man, that looked frosty and delicious, but I'm not drinking it. That doesn't make any sense. That's not what Jesus did. He fulfilled it, meaning he completed it. He came as an example to show us that it's possible. Now, everyone knows that Jesus is God, right? Jesus is God. He's not the father. He's the son, but he's still God. Did you guys know that when he completed the law, he was not God. He was a man. When he was born, was he God? Mm, no, he was born as a man because God is not born. Jesus became God when he resurrected from the grave. That's what man cannot do, but man will do through the power of Jesus' name. Okay, now this is very interesting because even week after week here in our own church, I literally think to myself, what are you thinking? So people walk in or they don't walk in, right? And I literally say to myself, what, what are you thinking? If Jesus said, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Watch, I'm going to read a little bit more and you're going to understand the reason why I'm constantly asking, what are you thinking? Verse 18. It says, for verily, I learned something interesting about this word verily just recently. Now, I teach that this is a combination of two words, very and really. Verily. Get it? See how that works? You just cram words together like a rapper. But the actual definition of this word is amen. It's taken from the Hebrew, even though it's written in the Greek. It's taken from the Hebrew. It is amen. For amen, I say unto you. What does amen mean? So be it. Now watch what Jesus is saying. For so be it, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Which law? The law of God. 
till all be fulfilled. Okay, that makes sense. We understand that. To all be fulfilled by him or all be fulfilled by me, us. Yeah, the law is not going to pass away until everyone has fulfilled it. He came as an example. He fulfilled everything in the scriptures that was written concerning him. Does that mean that I don't have to do it? I want you guys to think about this for a second, because thinking is what, what our message is about today. What are you thinking? Are you really thinking that Christ came and died so that you could do anything you want? If he himself said, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this. Well, you know what? One day I'm going to come down there and I'm going to sacrifice my life so that you can do the exact opposite of what I died for. What, what, are they, what are you thinking? That doesn't make any sense. Let's keep reading. Watch this. Hmm. Give me verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one. How many? One of these least commandments. Okay, now, I want to know what you guys are thinking right now. What are you thinking one of the least commandments are? Think about it for a sec. Let me show you. There, you see it? See it? This is one of the least commandments. He said, all I want you to do is put some fringes on the bottom of your garment so that you and the people that see you can remember the commandments. And all of the information that he puts about the fringes, the ribbon of blue, that information is a copy of what he said the tabernacle of God looks like. Now, the curtains in the tabernacle have a ribbon of blue on them. Okay, watch this. Curtains are meant to cover the house of God. What are you? You are the house of God. So he said, I want you to look just like the tabernacle of God. I want you to be dressed the way that the tabernacle of God is dressed so that when people see you, they think about him. They remember the commandments. Now that is clearly one of the least commandments, isn't it? That's one of the least commandments. Even if you did not have, you were like, I'm not buying no fringes. You could take a pair of scissors and clink, 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 just cut up the bottom of your thing and literally take one piece of thread and just sew some ribbon of blue around it so that you could keep the commandments. That sounds real simple, don't it? Let's get back to the scripture because what are people thinking? Like, that's literally one of the least commandments. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, I got tons of precepts, but I want to show you one more scripture before we get into them. Watch this. Verse 20. For I say unto you that except your right choiceness shall exceed. What does exceed mean? That means surpass, that's good. To go what? Above and beyond. Outside the bounds of. It is far superior to. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. There's a comma right there. Let's talk about that. The scribes and the Pharisees, did they know the commandments? Absolutely they did. Did they do the commandments? Absolutely not. They did not do them. You don't want to be one of these people who think, I go to Prophecy Christian Ministries, I hear about the commandments, the law, and the testimony, but you don't actually know them. You don't want to be one of those people. Those are scribes and Pharisees. You want to be one of the people that's like, I come to this church because they preach the commandments and I also do them. You could go anywhere if you just want to hear people preach. This ain't the place for you, right? And those that are watching online, this is not the video for you. This is about doing. Greg pulled out a scripture that said, be ye, what? People who show up sometimes and decide that, I love to hear about the commandments, but I won't do it. It don't say that. Be ye doers and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? I can just do whatever I want. Some people actually think that. Some people think Christ died so that I can do whatever I want. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Ye shall 
in no case <laughs> enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wait a minute. That means just because I hear about these commandments and I have been told and absolutely convinced that they're not done away with, is that enough? Hearing about it is one thing. Doing it is another thing. Does that make sense? All right. You guys know there's a scripture in the Bible that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, as a man thinketh, so is he. You are whatever you think you are. Give me Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Let's find out just a little bit more about this law. Because Jesus said, I don't even want you to think. Why? Because everyone was thinking, I can't wait until I don't have to do the right thing anymore. The only people that are thinking that are people who want to do wicked. If you want to do wicked, it's like you're saying, man, I, I can't wait for this police officer to stop driving behind me so that I can start speeding. <laughs> I can't wait for the possibility of punishment to leave so that I can be the wicked person that I actually am. That's not what God is calling us to do. He says, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. Okay, watch this. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. The Bible says, know ye not, brethren. And then he, he uses his inside voice. He's like, well, I know they all call themselves my brothers, but he that doeth the will of God is my brother. He says, for I speak to them that know what? I speak to them that know the law. He's not talking to everybody right here, is he? How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Why would Paul be saying this in Romans if the law is done away with? Why would he be saying for as long as you are alive? Which law is he talking about right here though? Let's, let's, let's keep that. He's talking about the law of God. There's never going to be a time where the commandments, the law of God, is done away with. That's just impossible. What are you thinking? I know what you're thinking. When you decide, I'm going to do wickedness today, and it may not even be wickedness. You're like, I'm going to break one of the least commandments today. You're thinking that the law is done away with. There's nothing else that you could be possibly thinking when you break the commandments. Give me John chapter 7, verse 49. I have to show you guys these scriptures, um, and most of them we've gone over before many times. But I can see you and see you're thinking that God relaxes sometimes, that, that he's slack concerning his promise. No, he's not. He made a promise. His promise works in two ways. If you keep my commandments, you'll have eternal life. That's right. Okay, what happens if you don't keep his commandments? You have eternal death. That's a promise. Now, we want him to fulfill one, but sometimes we want to slack off and hope that he just lets that slide. Watch this. John chapter 7, verse 49, the Bible says, But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. I don't know about you, but I'm not cursed. I used to be. Right? Pastor Greg was talking about that. We have to break these generational curses. What is the real curse? My parents didn't know the law. They didn't raise me in the way that I was supposed to go. But now it's on me. God has revealed his word to me. My parents still don't believe. They still do it exactly the way they want to do it. But I'm the proof that the generational curse is broken because I'm going to keep the commandments of God and I'm going to teach my children to keep the commandments of God and we're going to have a whole different type of generation than the generations that came before me why? because I am going to be a doer of the word amen give me Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 I want to show you something because a lot of people use Galatians to prove they're like the law is done away with read Galatians no, you're reading it wrong the book is still sealed to you. Please take this book to a man who loves God and he will open it up and he will expound it for you. This is proven in the Bible. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was an Ethiopian eunuch who was riding in a chariot and he was reading the book of Isaiah. And the Lord sent a man. He transported him from one place to another place. Poof, just like that. He poofed on it. He sent him from one place, it was Philip, from here to there. And Philip looked and he saw the chariot coming and he drew himself to the chariot and he looked down and he saw that the Ethiopian was reading the book of Isaiah. And he said, what are you thinking? 
<laughs> he didn't say that. He said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I? It's impossible for me to understand. He said, how can I except some man should explain it to me? Why? Because even though he had the book open, the meaning behind it was sealed. The Bible tells you Philip climbed into the chariot and began to break down precepts. He was just hitting him, boom, telling him all about the testimony of Jesus. And do say, wait, skirt, stop the chariot. Look, there's water right there. I need you to put me in that water because the word that you spoke, it washed me on the inside. But I need to get dipped in this water so that I can be clean on the outside. Clean on the inside. Clean. Shout out to Tehran with the, with the, okay, watch this, watch this. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law. What law is it talking about right there? That's the law of sacrifice. Ah, you do the things that the law says don't do, then you are of the works of the law, are under the curse. Now, if you don't know the difference between the law of God and the law of sacrifice, then the Bible is still closed to you. That's a guaranteed fact. It's still sealed. You need to take it to some man who understands so that you can get your walk with Christ right. Okay, now watch this. It says, for it is written, cursed is everyone. Does it say continueth in the law? We don't say that. It says, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So who's cursed? Everyone who does not keep the law of God is cursed. But what are they thinking, though? They think they're blessed. Isn't that weird? Everyone who doesn't keep the commandments thinks that they're blessed. Something happens in their life and they're like, oh, God blessed me. And we're like, yeah, that's what you think. You got a blessing, but it wasn't from the most high. It was from that other guy. Give me Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Hmm. We have to cover these things repeatedly because this is the number one belief in Christianity. This is the core of most people's belief system in Christianity. It is completely polarized into two groups. I like to refer to them as us and them. <laughs> right? And it's forever going to be us against them until they become one of us. Right? You know, there's two groups. There's two groups. When Jesus comes back, he's gathering all nations and he's splitting them up into what? Two groups. It's us versus them. Well, what is, what is it that the them believe? They believe that Jesus died so that they can do anything they want. That they don't need to repent. That the minute that they got saved, they are forever saved and will continue to be saved. We don't believe that. We believe that you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We believe that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. When do we get saved? At the end. So what must I do between now and then? I must endure. I must repent. I must do the works. You know what they believe? Jesus died. I had so much faith and Jesus died. And now I have even more faith. And I got so much faith that I... I now I can pray over, I can pray over that pork chop and my prayer will change the molecular structure. It will pull out all the stuff that was unclean and now I can eat it. What, what are you thinking? Is that what you're really thinking? You can pray over something that God said is unclean and you can make it clean? Okay. Romans chapter 3 verse 31. The Bible says, do we then make void the law through faith? What's the answer? God forbid. Yeah, we establish the law. This word establish is very interesting. Establish means to make concrete, to make firm. It also has the very specific meaning of to fulfill. <laughs> Take a look at that. What do we do? We establish it. Isn't that what Jesus did? He established it. What does that mean? To fill to the full. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we fulfill the law. Christ fulfilled the law. He called us to fulfill the law. Is this making sense? Because I, sometimes I don't know what people are thinking. I'm like, let's talk about the Sabbath for a second. Give me, give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I just got precepts today. Just precepts. 
Give me Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. I guess I better look at it. I want to show you guys something because the Sabbath, the Sabbath is one of those things that people look at as one of the least commandments. No, out of the 10, the Sabbath is one of the greatest commandments. Wow. It's the only one that's punishable by death in this life and in the next. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. The Bible says, try to. <laughs> it don't say that, does it? Man, what are we thinking? Try to remember the Sabbath if you can. I don't know. If you got laundry to do, forget about the Sabbath. If you need to wash your car or maybe you just want to spend money, then I don't know. Just do your best. That's what we think God is saying, but he's not saying that. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Give me verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do how much? All thy work. But the seventh day, give me verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Did he leave anybody out? No, he covered everybody in that little situation right there. Give me verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Did he leave anything out? No, he said everything that was created he created he, he didn't say well you know what i'm gonna leave this one last part till tomorrow I, I can work on it tomorrow it's gonna be he finished the whole thing watch this and rested the seventh day wherefore the lord blessed the sabbath day now let me ask you guys a question what do you think did god bless any of the other days did it say he blessed day one blessed day two the only day that he blessed was the seventh day it says Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now, proximity. Have you guys ever noticed that if you hang out with somebody who's blessed, you feel like more blessings pour into your life, right? If you hang out with, this, this is true, if you hang out with somebody who makes a lot of money, you naturally start to make more money. Um, there's a, there's a, a slogan, it goes, birds of a, what do they do? Birds of a feather flock together. That means that the eagles fly with the eagles and the pigeons, they fly with the pigeons. And if the pigeon tries to fly with the eagle, the eagle's just going to eat it. That's, that's literally what happens. That's what happens. Okay, but then you have to say, who are you flying with? Are you flying with commandment keepers or commandment breakers? Right? Are you flying with the people that are up above or those that are down below? And when I say up above, I mean the ones that are standing on the glass looking down into the lake of fire. Or are you with the ones that are in the lake of fire looking up saying, man, I, I probably should have did what pastor said. I, I didn't keep no Sabbath. Okay. That sounds like one of the least commandments. But watch this though. The Bible says, forsake, forsaking not the assembly. What does that mean? You guys familiar with that? Not forsaken the assembling as the manner of some is, but so much the more as ye see the day approaching. What does that mean? That means we get together. We get together on the Sabbath. We get together for these Sunday services because it's the opportunity for you to learn, to share, and to grow. That's what you come in here for, to fellowship, to say, hey, I learned this. Let me share this with you. That's one of the least commandments. The fact that we are commanded to get together is one of the least commandments. What are you thinking? You're thinking, I'm just going to stay home today. <laughs> I think I'm just going to stay home. It doesn't matter if I show up or not. Wait, if you're commanded to get together and you decide that you're going to stay home, are you still keeping the commandments? It's one of those least commandments. See, we have to take this word a lot more seriously because we'll sit at home and be like, I don't know, I'm, man, I'm going to see you next week. Okay, that's like saying, well, I don't really need the word of God in my life this week. <laughs> I'll just catch up with the word next week. All right, watch this. What did you say? Right. There are people that believe that, and that is true. We are the church. But no one can be the church all by themselves. It requires, Jesus didn't say, 
where you are by yourself, I'm in the midst of you. He didn't say that. He said, where two or three are gathered, there am I in the midst of them. Okay. Take me back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. I just want to show you guys a couple more scriptures because this part is very important. He says, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And he pauses right there so that you can take a minute and, and think. Do I even know the commandments? Do I show up when the Lord calls me? When I'm commanded to go, do I actually respond? Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. How are you teaching men so? You're doing it. They see you doing it and they think it's okay. Oh, well, Mike didn't do it, so I'm not going to do it either. Oh, we went out to eat and um, yeah, I don't know, bro. You, you're going to eat that? All right, well, just let me get a bite. <laughs> let me just get a bite. I'm not going to order it, but I'm going to take a bite of yours. Man, that shrimp look good. Oh, let me just get a bite. Ah, you have now broken the commandments. It's that simple. Why? What do the commandments represent? It's one word obedience that's the reason why he says whosoever shall break one of these least commandments whosoever decides to be disobedient in the smallest thing is also disobedient in the biggest thing because the commandments represent obedience and shall teach men so we teach more with our life than we do with our words he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know we've talked about this many times, but what are you thinking? They're thinking, at least I'm in the kingdom. <laughs> at least because the lake of fire is in the kingdom of heaven. That's why they're called the least in the kingdom. It's directly outside the gates, right outside the gate. The whole world becomes the kingdom. Right. Remember what the angel says uh, after the seven trumpet is blown. The kingdoms of the earth have become the kingdoms of our Christ. The whole earth becomes his kingdom. But he has a specific place designated for where he is going to live, where you are going to live, and where those who are in the lake of fire are going to live. He has a specific place. They're still in the kingdom. What do we call them? Man, you the least in the kingdom. You know how many times I tried to tell you, you wanted to do your own way. I tried to tell you again and again and again and again, but you just wanted to do it your own way. Now you want to do it God's way. It's a little too late. Whosoever shall do, <laughs> watch this, says, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Give me John chapter 14. Verse 15. I'm almost done with it. In fact, I got three more scriptures to show you. Hopefully it's going to change what you're thinking. Watch this. Jesus said, if you love me, do what? What is if? If is a conditional statement. That's, it means that there's a, always an opposite of the if, right? If I walk outside... The opposite of that is I stay inside. There's always an opposite to the if. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you don't, don't keep my commandments. You don't, huh? Right? If you hate me, break my commandments. But so that one's good, but it's actually if you hate yourself. If you hate yourself, break his commandments. You breaking the commandments only hurts yourself, right? <laughs> All right, watch this. Give me 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. This is so important. Why are we so often talking about keeping the commandments and the law and all this stuff? Because there's a thousand churches here in the city of Phoenix. And we're probably the only one that talked about this this morning. We're probably the only one. Right. If you want to hear about pastor's summer vacation, <laughs> they, they talk about that. They talk about what well, we're planning the pastor's day of appreciation. They talk about that. They don't talk about the law, statutes and commandments. The Bible says he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. What is this person thinking? 
They think they know God. Can they prove that they know God? Nope. What are they actually? They're a liar. Right? Okay, let me show you one more. Um, Revelation chapter 22. You can just read it right here off the shirt, though. Revelation 22, verse 14. I see people walking around with shirts that say blessed, and I can clearly see what they're thinking. <laughs> you think that you, you think you're blessed. You think there's a blessing in breaking his commandments. The Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they might, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in, wait, may enter in through the gates into the city. This is the city of God. Now watch, give me one more verse, verse 15. He said, we got to go on the inside of the gates for without on the outside of the gates are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and people who think that the commandments are done away with. That's basically what it's saying. You don't say that. It says, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Those are the least in the kingdom. Amen. This is the message that I have for you today. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. If, if you are here, continue coming because there is a there is an event that is coming to the world that we live in <clears throat> that most people will not be ready to deal with. There are some things that are happening. They're all preceded by a sound like you. You can hear it coming. It's very faint right now, but but you can hear it just with the way that things are going. Did you guys hear about the, the president of Haiti? Did you guys hear about that on the news? Let's talk about that real quick. Watch this. The president of Haiti got assassinated a few days ago. You know why? He refused to bring the vaccine into Haiti. You guys can go ahead and come on to the city. He refused. He said, we are not vac vaccinating the Haitians. And he was assassinated in his house. Another president, I can't remember exactly, I think he's Malaysia, within the same week was also assassinated. Want to know why? Because he refused to vaccinate the people in his country. Now, I, it seems simple because we're talking about presidents in other places, but do you know how much the world would be in an uproar if our president of the United States got assassinated? He won't, though. You know why? He's the number one dude that's pushing the vaccination. See, there's a time coming that we have to get ready for. Here, we talk about those things. You go somewhere else, they're just talking about Pastor's Appreciation Day, right? So I, I want to encourage you to continue to come to bring your loved ones, bring your family members so that they can hear, see, and experience the truth. There's going to come a time when people are looking for this. And they're going to say, what, what happened to that little church that used to be on Central? They're not there no more. Why are they not there? Because nobody was coming. And if the people don't come, why would we be here? Think about that.